three starters at punter. Yeah, uh, how about that? Through just what you guys have seen from these guys. You saw some bad punts and some good punts uh, Saturday. Well, coached for a long time and never had a punt situation quite like this one. This has been uh, quite the unique experience, and uh, we're still hashing our way through it. It has not gone as smoothly as we anticipated. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> when it comes to Ben, we talked about him kind of learning from the Tennessee game and taking that experience and what he's been able to do since that. What do you think has changed, whether it's from his technique or just from his mental standpoint yeah. that's kind of helped him turn that around? I think for Ben, it's been more mental than anything. Um, man, from the time he got here to now, he's really grown up. He's really matured. Uh, some of the peripheral things don't bother him. That you, things that used to bother him. He just focuses on doing his job. And he's, uh, you know, players mature. You know, they, they learn how to prepare themselves. They learn how to get the job done. And he's certainly done that. What have you seen from MJ as a punt returner and just that whole play overall? Yeah, you know, that's another situation that, uh, you know, uh, early on did not go as smoothly as we thought. But uh, we feel like we found a, a good punt returner. Um, you know, he's had some good plays. Uh, he's had a few that he'd probably like to have back. He's learning. Um, you know, just, just grab the ball and, and uh, do what we call HA. Uh, that's the most important thing. And um, there's a couple he'd like to have back. He's had some good ones, and he's still getting better. Would you like to see him kind of HA upfield a little bit more? Yep, yep. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, we're trying to take the ball to certain places and certain sometimes you have to lose ground to get there you know the one in North Carolina uh, we had a guy blocked and somebody stopped blocking um, and had that guy still on his block that one that got backed up down down around the goal line may have been a 90 yard touchdown um, one guy tripped him up and we, you know we had a blocker for that guy so you know you only get on the average 1.2 punt returns a game and so we've exceeded that and hopefully the next three games we'll get a chance to impact the game in that in that portion of the game. What have you seen from Rodney since he came back? You know, how's he doing getting back from that injury? He's getting back. You know, he's uh you know, Rodney's a little man. He's tough. Um, I was telling him he's a little man, you got to understand that. And there's certain things little men do. I mean he can't he can't play like Izzy. Izzy's a big man. Uh, but but Rodney is uh, extremely quick. And he's learning. Uh, his, his development is a lot like Izzy's. Izzy's second year, he knew more than his first year. Um, and the biggest thing with the running back is just understanding the line targeting, where they're, where they're blo who they're blocking. And so you can anticipate cuts. Uh, Izzy has done that. Rodney is still learning how to do that. But what he can do, he can see a hole and he can stick his foot and get in it. And uh, from that standpoint, we know we'll keep teaching him and he'll keep developing. Sebo was able to break free on that touchdown drive and on that drive he carried the ball 10 times in the 11 plays. What does that say about him and you know just him getting that opportunity? Uh, well, we got, you know, we feel like we've got a room full of guys that can all play. You know, Jerry's always asking, what are you gonna do with all those running backs? Well, one gets nicked up, you put another one in. And uh, well, fortunately we got several guys that can go in and play winning football. In fact. We feel like anybody in, in the room can go in and play winning football. Now, obviously, some of them have, you know, some skills that others don't. But we feel like if we play well, anybody in that room can play winning football. Talking to Keaton after the game, he had good things to say about the running backs and pass protection especially. <laughs> yeah. what, did, what was your assessment of how they done, especially with Rodney, a guy who missed yeah. a lot of time this year? You got to get better. Yeah. got to get better. We can't let the quarterback get hit. We can't let the quarterback get flushed out of, out of the pocket. We got to sit in there, we got to be firmer. So again, going back to Izzy's first year, Izzy had no idea who he was blocking. Then the second year, he knew who he had, but he couldn't quite do it. And that's where Rodney is now. He can do it sometimes, but not as well as we like to. But we know, you know, that's, that's the way you learn by playing. So he'll keep, he'll keep getting better. He 
getting in the way but not knowing what to do when he's there? Well, he's not only getting in the way. I mean, he's blocking the guys with his fundamentals, his angles, what he's doing with his hands and his feet. You know, they all work together. So he's got to get it all together. When you guys played Virginia last year, obviously it was like Kenny Pickett versus Brennan Armstrong, all these passing yards. What's different about Virginia this season? I don't know. They're, they're pretty good on defense. Um, I don't look at their offense. Um, like I said, they're pretty good on defense. I mean, they're big, they're long. They understand what they're doing. They play with leverage. They got an unbelievable exotic third down package, which is going to take a lot of work uh, to protect the quarterback. And they've had a third down package under other head coaches. So these guys, these guys play good. I mean, I mean they're, they're, they're tough. I mean, we're going to have to play really good to, uh, to challenge them. How, how successful has that exotic package been for them? Well, they got 30 sacks. I mean, it's pit half. I think 29. Almost 30, yeah. So we feel like we got some guys that can get after the quarterback pretty good. They got they got some guys that can get after the quarterback too. They know how to isolate. They know how to get the line to do certain things to isolate certain guys. So they're good. Do they bring DBs much? A little bit. You know, mostly down in the red zone. They bring DBs. Uh, but that's just the way they line up to how you target things. Uh, they line up some goofy ways. And uh, so you got to be able to account for people and make sure you don't get a back on a defensive lineman or make sure you don't get, you know, slide to protection one way when you should have slid it the other way. There's some deception in what they do. Going back to Ben, sometimes place kickers can be really routine based in how they go about game prep and right. even on game day. Right. Have you noticed any changes with Ben and his routine that's kind of helped him lead to this recent success? No, I, I think he's pretty routine based. And after a while, you know, when kids mature like Ben has, you know, I don't even talk to him about his routine. He's got his routine. His routine's different than uh, Kess's, and Kess's was different than, you know, Craddock's. Um, but after they mature and get to where he is, I just let them do what they need to do. I don't, uh, you know, he's hitting field goals pretty good, and uh, so I don't add my two cents. I just let him go, and, and then I'll add in as I see if we need to. What, what distance do you feel? you're comfortable with on a max level? What do you, how far down do you think you can go? Which way is the wind blowing? <laughs> <laughs> What's, what stadium are you in? <laughs> you want turf or grass? <laughs> he, he's got a strong leg. He can definitely go over 50, maybe 55. He probably thinks he can go deeper. Uh, you know, if it's, you know, where we, where we have to have it, we could probably go 55, you know. Uh, but in the course of a game, we probably wouldn't try a 55-yard field goal. We'd probably punt the ball and play field position.